gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome back to another Saturday, which means it is time for another Nos Watches Ara Ferretta. Oh boy. So, in the last episode, um, in the last episode, uh, my fucking lungs collapsed. Uh, no, they got out of the labyrinth, finally. Uh, Kaori, Kaori is no longer the only side character that, it, that the camera is focusing on, so thank fucking god. Um, some bullshit happened in the castle I don't care about, and everyone got back to, got back to civilization just fine, I assume. Cool. Hopefully now we can go back to having good episodes instead of, like, shit that belongs in season one. Holy shit. But, let's get in here and let's see how Hajime does, shall we? In three, two, one, and go! Like, I am... Actually, so fucking done with that last arc, dude. That last arc was so fucking bad. All right, we are back at civilization. Cool. Time to see Hajime fuck that mermaid. See him, see him split that fishussy. That fussy. Not that fussy. The other fussy. Of course. UA gets bed privileges. UA is the only one that gets bed privileges. All the other waifus have to sleep on the floor. That is kind of like a sweet, like, detail, right? Like, like I will, I will shitpost nonstop, right? You can't fucking stop me. But, like, it is actually, like, a really nice bit of visual storytelling they didn't address. They didn't go, like, oh, man, no, you always in the bed. No, like, it's just, she's just there, you know? And it's, I don't know, it's subtle. Or subtle for this, for this show, at the very least. Um, and kind of shows that, like, you know, she's the one. She's the waifu. Like, the other members of the polycule, they are... You know, they're in the polycule, but they're not the they're not the nucleus. They're not the nucleate nucleate nu nucleating site. God, fuck. <laughs> so people that missed the the streams where I talked about like people being polyamorous. Oh boy, that's not gonna make any fucking sense. But yeah, I don't know. I I do think that this show is actually like surprisingly like one of the better examples of a polyamorous relationship in in anime. Like, it, which is actually kind of fucking weird. You know? Like, I do wish that, like, they're, that they, that the other girls weren't so fucking absolutely dead set on Hajime, but at the very least, we've seen some minor interest between Shea and Tio. Like, very, 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 very minor shit. But it just kind of goes to show how fucking low the bar is. Because we're gonna make you a little sister! Let's go! <laughs> my man is literally just a s my, this guy is literally just a dad like goddamn, like Hajime is fucking parental instincts on fucking point fucking prudes She's the one that entered the room. <laughs> Fucking, they were asleep. You're enjoying the family. You're having a little family time. I mean, let's be honest, right? 
Like if he wasn't so if he wasn't so dead set on going back to Japan, he could literally just retire here. Like he's far away from all the other assholes that he fucking like brought from Japan. You know, he's got he's got a place that he's got a place that I feel like I feel like she wouldn't ma she wouldn't mind having him around. Got all the waifus. Fucking I mean, hey. Could literally just start up his little polycule family. I got all these bullets to make. Oh no, he fucked up. He made an oopsie. Guess you're just gonna have to stay here forever there, then, Hajime. Can't leave. Just give up on going back to Japan. Damn, now she has the fucking... she has the advantage. No, it's part of the game. It's part of the game now. Ah, oh, she's a precious fucking bean. I love her. I mean, clearly, you just need to stay. You know, fucking Mew can just have, you know, Mew can just have multiple moms. Multiple moms and a robot and a, and a cyborg dad. It's to totally normal fucking family dynamic. God, like... Okay, this man's gonna have the most diverse fucking range of daughters possible. Cause you know this is a fucking anime. You know this man will never have a son. Fucking... Fucking, like, beast person daughter. Dragonborn daughter. Dampier daughter. You know, and if he winds up getting with Remia, then fucking half mer person daughter. Like, seriously, this just reminds me of, like, the fucking, like, the meme. The, the meme of, like, the bar, like, the final fight. The final fight, the bar just calls on an army of all the fucking bastard children. All the bastard children he's fathered over the years. A full army of the most diverse motherfuckers. Too late. Damn fucking allosexuals, god damn it. Violence. Oh my god. Oh no.
Oh, this is a crime. This is actually illegal. What? I'm fine. Go away. <laughs> I love you. So Sai was concerned. Uh... And there she goes. There she cries. Yes, he has to travel the world and give you many more siblings. Jungle chicken mating call. That's something I've never heard before. This... Mew's gonna fucking punch her way through reality. This bit, this bitch gonna fucking, this bitch gonna punch her way through the, through dimensions to go to Japan. Just smash cut 30 years in the future, Hajime's like in his 40s, 40s or 50s, fucking Mew just like appears. I told you I'd come to Japan, Papa, I'm gonna smack your shit. Yeah. A jack in the box? This fucking this man's just gonna bring like all of the fantasy creatures with him to Japan. He's gonna completely change Oh my god, he's gonna single-handedly save the birth rate of Japan. Holy shit. My man gonna bring cat girls back through with him. Be like, behold, I have solved the birth rate crisis. Cat girls! Just smash cut like all the other girls. They're just loading firearms. UA is just putting a mag in a Glock. Fucking Tio is loading a shotgun. Fucking, uh, god, Shay is just fucking putting, putting 5.56 five, in a fucking AR-15 mag. Just say goodbye and fuck off. Yeah! I mean, let's be honest, like, there, there's not gonna be just one way to go to Japan, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, this is like, one of those scenarios where it's like, oh, option A or B? Well, I choose C. Fuck you. <laughs> like, it's, it's, one, it's one of those shows. And even, and even then, like, it's just kind of realistic. It's like, oh, you can only go now. It's like, really? You can't fucking wait ten minutes? Jesus. Holy shit, Hajime just laughed. Holy fuck. Has he actually had, like, a proper laugh the entire fucking series? Holy shit. Like, I, I actually don't think he has actually laughed properly, like, before now. Holy shit, Mew actually really is a good influence. Clearly she just moved his new wife and daughter into the fucking submarine. He's just gonna collect more wives and daughters as, as the series goes on, let's be honest with ourselves.
Ah. Ah, that's sweet. And we're back to the shit I don't care about. All right, time to take a nap. God, that is, you know what that that you know that is actually sad that this show is like the f best example of a polycule when it's not even really a polycule because it's not like because it's not really like it's 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 more of a harem than anything with like relationships between the individual members being hinted at if not ignored or just used for jokes yeah this one's more yeah you know what now i think about it, yeah this one's more polygamy than po polyamory We're trying to you. We're trying to kill God, or something. I don't fucking. I don't care. I mean, now that she's left the board, she's no longer a threat, right? Which means you can tell her whatever. It's not like she's going anywhere. I mean, come on. Like, I understand this is gonna wind up being the end game for like the actual main plot. God, do I not give a fucking? I do not give a shit. Hajime don't give a shit. Hajime already got shit he wants to do. That's like completely separate from this. God, the skeletons are getting hype. Holy shit! Getting so, getting so, oh, getting so hyped with her bad CG. God. Can we, can we please not go back to shitty, shitty CG, please? Like, that's passable, at the very least. And back to shitty. Okay, cool. Cool. That is the whitest Jose I've ever fucking seen in my life. Holy shit. Our, our alchemists have, this, have dubbed it COVID-19. Truly, it is a dangerous malady. Everyone must remain six feet apart at all times and wear a mask. We're gonna need to use the abyss. It's the only way. Fight dark magic with dark magic, I guess? I mean, I mean, morale kind of makes or breaks an army, my dude, like. I mean, why do they need to kill you when the morale can be damaged with an easier fucking spell that's hard to fucking detect? This dude's kind of thinking like a fucking dumbass. Like...
Like, ah oh, yes, why don't they just use a sniper spell and just fucking murder the shit out of me to kill morale? It's like, well, because I don't fucking have to, idiot. They can, like, kill the morale of, like, 30% of your fucking forces, like... Like, super fucking easily. Alright. Alright, time for this kid to do a crime. Alright. Really hitting him with the restless leg syndrome, huh? All right, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna end. It's gonna, it's, seriously, like that, that kiddo got sent to fucking kill Mel, didn't he? <laughs> Holy shit, my man! My man quick on the draw, holy shit! And watch Daisuke's grab his fucking sword so he can't use it. Hope you don't mind getting your ass beat. Aw oh man, pretend to, pretend to kill the traitor so that the traitor can get in a situation to... Like this plot, this plot always fucking happens, and it's always dumb. Yep, there it is. So what if, so what if Meld hadn't got in front of him? Like, that's always the question I have for plans like this, and it's why I don't like them in media, and why I think they're fucking dumb. Like, what if Meld was slow, right? Or what if, okay, so there's two, there's two options here, right? So, either Jose was swinging with the intent to actually fucking kill, which he would have to if the intent is for Mel to catch the blade, right? Because Mel, because if he was like, you know, if he was limp wristing it and Mel grabbed it, he'd be like, hey, what the fuck? What the hell? That. Or Mel would notice that the blade's gonna miss and he's gonna, just gonna go for his sword anyway. And it's like, you, you're okay, well, he's not in position. The fuck are you gonna do? Now he's got a sword. So, if they do swing with the intent to kill, and... Meld is too slow. Daisuke is fucking dead, and the plan is f and the plan is foiled. Like, what the fuck do you do then? You know. So like, <laughs> so like, you have to like know a hundred and ten percent that Meld's like not having an off day. That he's not going to be surprised by his soldier coming in and swinging swords around, and it's just. It requires way too much fucking assumption on the pat on the part of the fucking betrayer for everything for like that everything goes the way it do. It's fucking dumb. <sighs> like I I really 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 do not like it like as a concept like this sort of plan. And I'm gonna be honest. Like I'm gonna be honest. Like I I fucking hate it. I fucking hate this sort of plan, and this sort of, like, plotting and shit like that. Uh, I imagine that this next arc is going to be Hajime meeting up with 
Like, you know, he's gonna receive a letter and be like, Oh man, hey, if you're reading this, I'm probably fucking dead. Hey, you need to come and save the people. And Hajime is gonna have to go and do it. But it's like, I don't fucking care about this plotline. I really don't. Like, the plotline I care about is Hajime and his fucking- and, and his fucking harem of waifus. Like... Like, traveling the world, doing these dungeons in order to get the ability to travel across the dimensions back to Japan. That's the shit I care about, because, honestly, like, the rest of it is set dressing, and it's fucking stupid, and it's dumb as hell. Like, it's... It's not... It, it's not good. Is You know, like, it's... it's like this whole thing where it's like, oh, we're going to brainwash the people, and we're going to overthrow the human village, and we're going to do this. Oh, we got the demon war. Ooh. Like, God, do I not care. And Hajime shouldn't care either, because these fuckers have done nothing but make his life miserable the entire time he's been in this stupid fucking world, right? Like, Hajime should get this letter from Meld and go, okay, cool. Uh, I don't care. Y'all can go jump off a fucking bridge for all I care. Suck my fucking taint. And then he just goes to the next fucking dungeon. Like, you know? Like... These people have done nothing but make his life worse. Like, the entire time he's been here. He has no reason to fucking save them, right? It's... It's it's why I would argue that, like... Like, if, if like, it, it's, it's like... It, it's like fucking Naofumi in S.H.I.E.L.D. Hero, going back and saving the king, despite the fact that the king made his life actively fucking worse. Like, you know, Hajime saves the day. Hajime fights the Pope. Hajime does... No, Hajime. Uh, Naofumi, you know, saves the day. Ha Naofumi fights the Pope. Naofumi saves the day. He saves the king and all the other heroes. And the king goes, okay, fuck, what you want? And Naofumi's just like, all right. Wants you to rename your daughter who fucking betrayed me. Her name is now Bitch. Also, she's now a slave. Also, you can fucking wash my goddamn name out your goddamn mouth. Like, and just flip in the middle finger. Like, that is, that is the Chad shit, right? He gets treated like a piece of shit, so he treats the king like a piece of shit in return when he, when he obtains that power, position of superiority. Like, Hajime, if Hajime comes back and saves the fucking day, it'll be a betrayal of everything he fucking is. And I understand, like, oh man, you just want to be an edgy misanthrope. It was like, if the fucking shoe fits, like, holy shit. Sometimes edgy mis misanthrope is the exact fucking character you need. Like, edgy misanthrope is not, like, necess necessarily a bad character fucking archetype. It, it works. It, it, like, there's a reason that edgelords exist in media. It's because they work. And that it's something that sometimes some stories fucking need, and this one kind of does. Like, yes, the story of Hajime kind of, like, becoming a bit of a shitter, and over time becoming a better person through, like, the, you know, hanging out with the waifu squad and, you know, uh, raising Mew for a bit and all that. Like, him becoming a better person, yes, that's good. But that doesn't mean he should forget the fact that the entire world has gone out of his way to treat him like an absolute fucking prick since he arrived. Like, holy shit. He arrived, and because he didn't have a super powerful power, they are like, okay, yeah, fuck it, send him to die in the fucking cave with the rest of them. Fucking, you know? Like, ah, Like, his, with his power, he should have been a blacksmith. He should have been an artisan. He should have been someone who was improving the weapons and armor and everything of everyone. Instead, they're like, ah, fuck it, go in the fucking pit. When he had no offensive capability whatsoever. And yeah, so he winds up fucking almost dying. And yes, that death was at, at the b betrayal of someone else, but that's still something that probably would have happened anyway, based on how, like, how, what we know about the deeper parts of the labyrinth. Like, you know, it's... It's, it's, it's fucking ridiculous. It's absolutely fucking stupid. Um... Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm hoping that they maintain the arc for Hajime, and it remains interesting. And I really hope he doesn't get too involved in this shit. Like, I hope he shows up, like, fucking pops a cap in the king and fucking leaves. Because, like, we've established that the human kingdom is not worth saving. Like, the past several episodes, that has been established as a main thing. The human kingdom is not fucking worth saving. It's built on the bones of racism, murder, and genocide. And the exact same attitudes that got Hajime sent into the fucking labyrinth to fucking die 
is the same fucking attitude that caused it to be fucking built. So, you know, there's no real reason for him to give a shit, especially given what he's seen. Uh, like, and his classmates even re really aren't all that interesting either. Honestly. They're cunts. Fuck them. Um, but overall, I would say this episode is pretty decent. Like, that, fine, that ending part there was bleh, but I kind of rambled on there for a minute, so I guess, you know, my attitude for it is basically established. But, um, having this cute slice of life moment, like at the start, where it's just kind of like, you know, the farewells to Mew and her mum, like all of the girls and Hajime kind of just having like this moment of just, you know, vibing, having time together, you know. Like, and we get to see Hajime kind of soften as a person. It's really sweet and really nice, and I like it. And, and like I said before, the, the incidental storytelling kind of thing of just, you know, the, the, the girl that gets to share Hajime's bed is, is Yue. Like, it's, it's nice, and it kind of shows that, like, you know, she's the number one for him, and that's, that's cute, and that's sweet, and I like it a lot. Um, and it is kind of neat that we, despite having a show that, where we have, like, a harem that is, like, a weird in-between of polygamy and polyamory, um, you know, we, we get, we still get to see what Hajime's preference is, and he's not just going to each of them being like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I'ma fuck all of these bitches, like, cause no. Like, he cares for all of them, but he cares for Yue a little more. Like, and he basically laid that all out for Kaori in the previous episodes. Like, is good. is fun. It's alright. This is probably, like, the most wholesome fucking harem show that exists. Um. Yeah. It's good. Uh. I, I think, like, literally the only thing I would excise from this season is the... Is the plot with the human kingdom. Like, I would probably, like, if it was me, I'd probably, like, pop back on them and be like, oh, man, they got some shit going on, they got their own adventures, but I would keep Hajime way the fuck away from it. But, you know, like, maybe make it, like, an OVA or something, some optional material that you don't need to give a fuck about. You know, because, god damn, are the, are, like, they, they're just not interesting as characters, their plot is not interesting, and it's just fucking, like, literally, any time we pop back to them, it is the worst fucking part. It's like in, um... It's like in, uh, that time ago, uh, So I'm a Spider, So What? Um, like, whenever it popped back to the humans, it was, like, actively, like, the least interesting part, because it's set in the future. So, like, has no bearing on, on, uh, Wakamo, like, as, as we know her. And it only really started getting interesting towards the end. No? So, like, honestly, it would have been one of, like, like, like I said there, it'd be one of those things where, like, if you just separated it off into either its own thing, or maybe just have it be, like, like, uh, its own section of episodes, like, at the, like, either every other episode, or, like, the second half of the first season just be that, then it probably would have been a bit better. But, um, yeah. Eh. Eh. Uh, still, I mean... The stuff that's based around the main character is good, at the very least. The support, like, it's one of those things where, like, the, the B plot is so fucking dull that you can't wait to get back to the A plot. And, um, but you still have to fucking suffer through it, I suppose. But that doesn't mean I don't get to fucking complain and shitpost about it. But, uh, yeah. That's really all I gotta say. Uh, episode good. Show good. Uh, well, season good, I should say, because the fucking show overhaul. Holy shit, no, it's not. Uh, because the first season was still garbage. Um, definitely just, I, I kind of just want this plot line with the human kingdom just to be done and dusted. Just fucking blitz through it, fucking speed run, backwards long jump into it, fucking just get through it. Because fuck me. Fuck me, dude. But, uh, yeah. I don't know. Let me know what you think down there in the comments. Whether you liked it, you disliked it, you want to bring up something I forgot to talk about, which is entirely possible. Oh, boy. Uh, remember to like, comment, bear, subscribe, share on social media, tell your friends, hit the share button down below. If you want, you can always support the channel on Patreon or your stream elements, which is linked down there in the description. And if you want more content from me, I do try and post anime every single day at around noon, um, unless, you know, medical stuff gets in the way of it. Or, but I, and I also try and live stream every single day at around, uh, on the day this is coming out, uh, around 5 o'clock, we're going to be streaming some Fallout 76 with Claire and Gabby, and maybe someone else, if they feel up to it, as a special surprise guest, oh boy. Um, 
and that should be linked in the upper right hand corner. Uh, I'm thinking that uh, general stream time, I'm going to move it to 4.30 EST, so that way on the days where it's 5, it's not that big of a jump. Um, but uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy that. Oh boy. But that is all I have to say. Uh, freaking remember to like, comment, face, subscribe. As always, I am Nazi the Goblin, and I will see you in the next video, but most importantly, we'll become a goblin today, and I will see you a round.